Welcome, I am your pastor, Pastor Omar Ellison with Salt and Light Covenant Church. Open up your heart as we enter in to hear a word from the Lord. Sin in his eyes and in heaven's eyes has been taken care of. And we've been trying to show this um, in a greater way so we can all be on one accord on the same page when it comes to this topic, sin. He wants us to really understand it and really be able to be aware, even if we need to defend it in some sort of way, uh, when people and others will try to throw that sin word on you, you can have an understanding and know that we are no longer bound by sin because the Lord has handled all of that for us. But let's, keep, let's continue to talk about it because I think the more we talk about it, I think the more we go over it, I think the more it goes into us, I think the more you think about it when you're in your long time, when you're home, amen, it's a good topic to even talk about with your friends or other saved friends, amen, bring it up, talk about it, rehearse it, so you can yourself get more solid in it, and in some cases, you may even enlighten them in some areas, right, amen, we've been coming out of John 16, so if you would turn there with me so quick, uh, and um, touch basis with me there, John 16 has been our basis for this whole um, topic. I mean, it's still the viceroy because he's the one that is leading and guiding us. Matter of fact, he's the one that led us to this point right here, right? Amen. So the Bible says he'll guide you in all truth, right? Yeah. So this is a truth that he really wants us to get solid on, solidified in, to get uh, 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 edified in the fact that the truth of the, that he has taken care of sins. John 16, when you're there, let me know. Amen. When you get there, we're going to start right there in that seventh verse. Amen. We've been coming out of this. We've been using this as a springboard. I like to call them springboard scripture. John 16 and 7. We there? Watch this. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient or is it advantageous or it is a benefit for you. So he said, look, it is, this, is, this is a benefit for you that I go away. So it's a must that he went away. So we thank God that he went away. Watch this. For if I go, go not away... Watch this, the comforter, the helper, the viceroy, the governor of your life. Look what he said about him. He said he will not come unto you. So he said the reason why I'm going away is to be able to send you somebody that's going to help you through this thing called life. And now because of what I've done and what I'm going to do, because at the time he had not gone through that, that, that night of passion, but he said what I'm about to do is set it up for him to no longer have to come upon you because up until this time, he was only coming upon the people of God. But then here is Jesus. He's residing inside of Jesus. And he said what I'm about to do is set it up for all of those that believe on me. This viceroy, this governor, this comforter is about to reside in you just like he resides in me. He made his abode with me. And now what I'm about to do is set it up for him to make his abode with you. And now he will no longer come upon you but he will be inside of you but for me to get this to happen I got to leave I got to go away and this is what he's sharing with his disciples so he said look if I do not go away the comforter will not come unto you but if I depart watch this I will send him unto you so we thank God for what he did he sent his son we thank God that his son fulfilled out the law for us we thank God that his son went through that passion for us we thank God that he crucified he, he laid up himself as a sacrifice for the whole world we thank God that he laid down his life but we also thank God that he had the ability to get it up again hallelujah and when he got it up again not only did he get it up again he said now I have all power in heaven and in earth now I fulfilled filled what my father has sent me to do and then he sat here with them for about 40 days and 40 nights conversing preaching to them teaching them even the more about the kingdom when he was up he was preaching the kingdom when he went down and got back up again guess what he was still talking about the kingdom and he sat here for 40 days 40 nights and then he went back to heaven he is the only one hallelujah in heaven with the body It is him and him alone. He is the first of the first fruits. He's the only one residing in heaven with a body. Thank God. He is just an example of what we all are going to be and what we all are going to have. Are you with me on this? Right? So now here he is. He has gone back. And when he went back, he said, now I'm going to send someone. I'm going to send you some help. I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send the governor back in the earth. And here it is. When he said, I send him. He's going to come unto you. Now watch this. And when he comes, 
he will reprove the world. The world. Now look who he's on. He's going to reprove the world of what? Of sin, righteousness, and judgment. <clears throat> of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world has been judged. Now, we could talk about all of them, but the one that he's really uh, uh, wanting us to focus on right now is the sin. Of sin. That ninth verse. Of sin. Of sin. Why sin? He said, why? Because they what? Believe not on me. Why is the sin, why is that sin nature still having control? Because they do not believe on me. Or in other words, they do not believe what I have done. Done. They have not. They don't believe that I, I fulfilled it. They don't believe that I was able to do it. They they don't believe the payment that was made for them. They don't believe the blood that was shed for them. They have not received that payment. See, we believe, so we received that payment. We received the fact that He came and He died for me and just for me. And it's up to everybody to identify themselves with it. That hey, it was just for me. He did it all for me and because you believe that then he has taken care of some things for you already without you having to work for it so he has already taken care of your righteousness he's already taken care of your salvation he's already taken care of grace reigning in your life he's already taken care of mercy always being with you he's taken care of your healing he's taken care of the sin so now what he's saying, I've done what I needed to do. I've gotten it right where we messed up in the garden. So now because of what Jesus Christ has done, it's as though Adam never messed up. Because guess what? Just like he covered yours, he covered that too. So it's interesting to me when people say they still mad at Adam because of what he did and they negate the fact that Jesus took care of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good God. He covered it all the way back to when he said, like me. And now what he wants you to do is to operate just like Adam was. To be just like him. And they were only, listen to me, they were only focused on the good. They had no knowledge of evil in the garden until they ate of the fruit. Once they ate of the fruit, then the, then the Bible declares that they knew all things but he had already set it up for them to only know one thing and that was the good things that he had made available for them and now what Jesus Christ has done is in a sense placed us back in that same state and it's hell's job to get you to not know where you are see this whole thing about sin is simply dealing with identity now think about it the whole thing about sin is, is dealing with your identity in him. How do you identify in Christ? What is your identity? And what hell will try to get you to identify with is your past and your past mistakes and where you're messing up and whatever weakness you may even have with you today or whatever flaw you may have with you today or the way that you see things that's because it's contrary to his word. See, he will try to magnify all of those areas in your life to keep your focus and your attention off of what he has said and what he has done for you. Are y'all with me on this? And if hell can get you, it will get you to identify with something that has already been taken care of. And what happens if you do that, now the foundation of your life, the foundation of your belief system is established on deceit. It's a lie. Oh, y'all catching this. And it's so many of us that are believers have the foundation and the fabric of what we believe in based on a lie because we don't fully know who we are in him and that we are sin free because of him. Because everything that he has, I have. But you have to sit with this to become this. You have to really believe this to be able to receive this. And it takes time and it is a process. But once you decide to buy in, the father will meet you right there. He is the only one you can't fool. See, we can fool each other back and forth every day. Because we can put on the image, we know the language, we know the lingo, we know how to talk. But see, he's the only one that sees the heart. He looks at your heart. He looks past what you're saying, and he looks at the heart of man, the inner core of who you are, and he can tell if you mean business. Now, the interesting thing to me about is that once he knows you mean business, he meets you immediately. 
When he know you mean business by that. How many of us had that testimony? When we made a decision, because you know, most of the things in the, in the things of God is just simply a decision. You know, we pray so much about deliverance and we pray so much for change and the whole time heaven is saying, just make a decision. See, if you make the decision, you can go ahead and get it done. If you make the decision, the door can open up for you. But you're praying to me for something that you got to make the decision on. Oh, God, I'm not, I'm Y'all catching this. And we've been taught, see, the, the, the church has taught us to, to, to go to God and, 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 and pray to him and he'll make a way and that he's already made a way. He's already opened up the doors. Now, ultimately, what is, what is, what is it dependent on now? It's dependent on us. And what is heaven waiting on you to do? To make a decision. And once you make the decision, stick with it. Don't change. Run your course. Didn't he tell us in his word? He said, look, a man is not worthy to enter into the kingdom who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back. And what happens, we get to put our hand to the plow and then we run into situations and then we start looking back. And we are no better than the Israelites in the old covenant. Because here they are. They're going, he's dealing, he's operating, he's blessing, he's opening up doors. And then they get mad and say, what? Well, we need to go on back to Egypt. And a lot of us that are in the body right now are steady trying to go back to Egypt. And God is forever trying to get you into the promised land. And spiritually, the promised land here in the earth. Are y'all catching this? Are y'all walking with me on this? So this is what he's trying to get us to understand, that I need you to identify with what I did. Now, how do you do that? You have to first start off believing that he came, believing that he died, believing that he rose. You got to get solid on that. That's got to be the foundation of every believer's life, that he came, he died, and he rose. And now he is ascended, sitting on the right-hand side of the Father for me. And what did he take care of? Now, that's the next level. What did he take care of? He took care of my healing. He took care of the sins. He took care of providing for me. He took care of being de- delivering me. All of that has been taken care of. And we have, to, we have to sit with this until we become this. Are y'all, are y'all walking with me? Amen. And then here I am, and he mentions, my people still don't understand about sin. He said, they're still not getting it. They're still being bound by sin. Let's go to Romans 6. Let's look at that again. We ran through that uh, real quick last time, and that was like the the end. I I told you, I said, we're going to have to come back and look at this one again. But let's go to Romans 6, because we're going to touch on a few things here. Romans 6, because we we really want us to be solid in the fact of understanding about this thing, sin. Now, Romans 6, I like to call it the sin chapter, but it also talks about what you have been freed from, because we have been freed from sin. Say freed, women. Free. You have been freed from sin. We are all once bound by it, but now he has freed us from it. Look at this in Romans 6. Romans 6. Y'all there? Romans chapter 6. Now skip down with me to the 6th verse. Now we're going to skip through this because we went, we went through it last Sunday, but let's just, let's just, let's just skip through it. 6th verse, knowing this. Now what I told you, every time you read in the Bible and it says knowing this, this is what? This is something I need to know. This is something we all need to know. Knowing this, what we need to know, Holy Spirit, that... Our old man is crucified. So that old you, them old ways, them old patterns, that old mindset, look what he's saying. It has been crucified. With who? With him. When, did he, when, did, when was he crucified? Over 2,000 years ago. So you see how, how long he took care of that old man. So that old man, that old you, the old way you used to deal has already been taken care of. It's been crucified, right? Watch this. That the body of sin, because that was the old you, it was, it was, it was birth created form. The nature of the old you was sin. The body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. So what he did, he came and died, put it all upon himself, nailed it to the cross. And he said, I've took it, I've taken care of it. It's nailed, it's done, it is finished, right? That body, that body of sin. What he's talking about sin? He's talking about sin, the nature of sin, that nature. Because out of the nature, the seed of sin, I birth all of the other things. And a lot of times we get, we get caught off of the branches. It's the branches. So we get caught off of the lying. We get caught off of the cheating. We get caught off of the adultery. We get caught off of all of these different things. But those are just the branches of the nature, the nature. They have not allowed their nature to change. They have not believed to allow the, God, the Lord to come in to change the actual nature. 
You, the Bible says that those that believe in Christ are what? A new creature. So those that are in Christ now, we're in Christ. He said what? Now you're new. So that means everything about you is new. The way that you think has to be changed according to his word. The way that you speak, the way that you deal, the way that you operate, your attitude, everything changes. If you come into Christ and stuff ain't changing, you need to check. That's a self-check for yourself. You shouldn't be coming into Christ. You may come into Christ cursing, but you don't continue to curse. That will change. You may come into Christ with, with a bad attitude, but you don't continue with that bad attitude. That changes as you keep walking with are y'all watching are y'all get so the stuff that you had connected to you outside of christ once you get in christ all of that will start to peel away because he's starting to get you trained up and to teach you in his system and the way that his world operates and his world operates totally different than the world down here is this making sense to y'all so he's trying to get your mindset to understand that look i have taken care of everything for you but you have to believe that for yourself. Amen. When all the odds are saying it's not coming together for you. You got to know who you are in me. What's that? Identity. You got to identify with me and understand that I got you. Because I am a good father. Amen. And I paid for you. Amen. And if he paid for you, obviously, he must think we're valuable. Because what's the value you put on something is what you will pay for it. And what did he use to buy you back? <laughs> We're going to find out. So watch this. Watch this. Romans, he say, know this, your old man has been taken care of. Seven verse, for he, talking about Jesus Christ, that is dead is, now catch this, catch this. He that is dead is what? Freed. Freed. Now what are you freed from? You catch that? He that is dead is freed from sin. Now, I went and looked up freed. Freed is a simple word. We know what free means, but just to give you a, a real quick uh, understanding, a definition for it, free means to be released. Now, catch what it said. Released from captivity. Released from confinement or slavery. Freed. So, sin, up until us getting to know Jesus Christ, we were in captivity by sin. We were confined by sin. We were slaves to sin. What does that mean to be slaves to sin? That means that, that sin nature was ruling and dominating your thought life, your decisions, how you dealt with people, how you looked at situations. It tainted everything. Okay? And you were slave to it. It was nothing you could do, do about it. And then you up and heard about this Jesus somewhere, be it on the radio, be it on the TV, be it mom and daddy introduced them to you. You heard about this Jesus. And when you heard about this Jesus, this Jesus says, now, look, I have taken care of all of that. But it is a process because up into getting with Jesus, we were trying to figure it out. We were trying to network. We were trying to climb the corporate ladder. We were trying to get things in order. We were trying to be connected to the, the right people. So when we need situations to break, we could get these situations to break because of who we know. And then he gets in and he, he introduces himself and he says this, I'm all you need. <laughs> he said, I'm all you need. And for us, that is mind blowing. Because how are you it? How, how is it that he's the only one I need? And he's saying, I'm all you need because I've taken care of everything for you. So now I need you to believe in me, receive what I've given. And he said, if you can do that, you can have whatsoever you say. Amen. Are y'all catching this? So he said, look, I have freed you from sin. I freed you from the captivity of it. I freed you from the confinements of it. I freed you from you serving it. Because that's all a slave does. It serves the, the master. 
You're serving to the master. And whatever it tell you to do, it do. So sin was telling you to pop off, and you was popping off. Sin was saying, don't you take that no more, and we weren't taking it no more. Sin was saying, give them a piece of your mind, and you was giving them a piece of your mind. Sin said, oh, you don't want them to know about that. Lie about that. And we was lying about it. Now, hallelujah, y'all with me on this. This is how sin was directing us all before we came into the glory of who Jesus Christ is. Now, the trick of hell is, hell don't really care about you going to church. Hell don't really care about you reading your Bible. Hell don't really care about all of those things. Hell is want you to keep that same mindset. So hell will let you go to church. You'll go to church every Sunday and still be just as mean, still lying, still cheating. Because hell say, look, you don't really believe it anyway. And that's the one that he's trying to check. He's saying, look, don't you be coming in and out of here every Sunday and every Wednesday and then you really not believe it. I need you to I really identify what I paid for for you to be able to see the glory that you want to see in your life. There are a lot of things that we are looking for in our lives to manifest and we haven't seen it. Why? Because we haven't fully bought in. We haven't fully gotten solid on who we are in Christ. We haven't sat with him. We hadn't let him come in and mold us and change the way that we think. We haven't allowed him to come in and have intimacy with us in our long time. That's why I keep telling y'all, when you are home, when nobody is looking, what are y'all doing? You have to spend time with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is a must. You have to. If you want to see real change in your life, you got to spend time with him. You got to let them love on you. You got to let them reveal some stuff to you. You got to let them show you who you really are. Now, when he starts to show you who you are, you are ugly. I'm telling you, because when he showed me me, I said, that's me. He said, that's you, son. I said, dear God, I look that bad. He said, yeah, that's that. You look bad. He said, but you mask it pretty good, too, in a lot of areas. Because we've learned how to mask our areas. Oh, God, are y'all catching it? And he's going to reveal all this to you. And he's going to begin to change you. And he's going to begin to chisel you. Well, how does he do that? According to his word. And his word does it effortlessly without you even thinking about it. See, the way that we've been taught, we, a lot of us was brought up in religion. And a lot of us was brought up, you better turn or you're going to burn. A lot of us got saved because we didn't want to go to hell. <laughs> and for some of us, we needed it because some of us was heading straight there. First class trip. Hallelujah. I speak for myself. I know I was. And what? It, 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 it helped shift your life. But then you get in and you come in with that wrong mindset and the wrong idea of who he is. And it ain't until you get in here and get to know him for yourself. See, that's something my mother used to tell me all the time. Baby, you got to get to know him for yourself. See, while she was still here, I was still riding her coattail. So I was, I was knowing him through her. But look, when he moved the coattail out of the way, I went to see when that coattail transition, I didn't have anybody. I had to get to know him for myself. I had to become Mary. I had to sit down at his feet and hear the words of our Lord and Savior. And see, what is he saying? What does that mean? How does that correlate with me and my life? How do I connect it to my life? How do I walk in that in my life? How do I apply this to situations? And he said, just sit with me and I'm going to teach you all things. And how are you going to teach me, Lord? He said, good question, son. I sent you someone. I sent someone. I sent the comforter. I sent the vice war. I sent the governor that's going to govern you through everything. He's going to teach you all things. He's going to bring back to your remembrance all things. He is your friend. He's your helper, but also, don't get it twisted. He's God. And one thing, that's all I ask you to do, son, don't grieve him. Father, how do I grieve him? The only way you grieve him is when you don't do what he say. When you're not obedient, when he leads you in a way and you say, I don't know, I, I don't think that's right. And, oh, that don't feel good. He said, that's the only time you grieve him. He said, because when he's guiding you, he's going to only guide you in truth. And being guided in truth don't always feel good. Being guided in truth don't always make sense. Being guided in truth makes you sometimes, if you're not careful, doubt what you're getting. And he said, that's the only way you can grieve him is by not being obedient to the leading of where he's taking you. So he said, don't ever question him. Now, that's a process because how many of y'all know I've questioned him before? (laughs) 
We all have. You get in, you get to walking with them, and you're like a babe. You're like, I don't know about that. And that don't look good. And I don't know. And there have been times I've grieved, and then I had to come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, that really was you. Lord, I missed that one right there. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I failed that test right there, and I failed that test. Ooh, we're flying colors. Lord Jesus. But Lord, I thank you. Give it to me again. I missed it, Lord. Give it to me again. How many of y'all know y'all done missed it? We all will. You all have. You get in 10 years, you're still going to miss it. You get 20 years in, you're still going to miss it. You get 30 years in, there'll be some places you still might miss it. The only difference is you just don't miss it as much. <laughs> the further you get down the road with him, the less you start missing it. Why? Because you really start to get to know him. You really start to get familiar with his voice. And you really start identifying what he has paid for. Are y'all with me on this? And he's saying to us today, I have freed you all from sin, from the captivity, the confinement, the slavery to serve sin. Let's go a little further. Skip down with me to the 10th verse. Same book. Watch this. For in that, in that he died, he died unto sin. How many times? Once. Once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto who? The Father. Likewise, reckon you. That's us. That's us. Reckon you also yourself to be what? Dead. To be what? Dead to be what? Dead to what? Be dead indeed unto what? Sin. He wants you to be dead to it. Dead to the influence of it. Dead to the fact of the... And now, what, 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 what is he talking about? He said, look, I want you to get your eyes off of sin. So, some, so now, this is what happens. A lot of times, you get focused on your areas where you're weak. And you're saying, Lord, I need to change here. I'm not a steward of my finances. I need to change here. I'm not a steward of how I, I deal with people. I need to change. And see, every time it's something that you need to change, you yourself take him out of the way. Now, it's, it, it, it is a place you need to change, but he's saying, look, don't worry about that. Keep your eyes on me. I know about that already. And not only do I know about your weaknesses already, I still want you with those weaknesses because I know who I am. How many of y'all know our king is real solid in who he is? <laughs> God knows who he is. And he doesn't let things change him. He doesn't let your weaknesses change who he is. He wants you and he wants you with your weaknesses. Because he knows once you buy in to what he's selling, all of that is going to eventually fade away. But if hell can keep you focused on the places in your life where you're weak, with the places in your life where you falter, then he know he can keep you there. And God is saying, look, don't stay there. Get your eyes on me and what I paid for because I'm going to take care of that. You just keep walking with me. Get your eyes off your weaknesses. Amen. Now, you ain't going to hear this because the way this come across, and if you don't hear it from the right heart, you'll think I'm saying what? Just, you can just sin. Just do what you want to do. And I'm not saying that. And for those that know me, no, I ain't preaching that. Amen. I'm saying just get your eyes off the weaknesses, focus on him, and let him come in and trim that. Let him come in and prune that. Because trust me, if you see it, you know he does. That's right. Amen. Come on, y'all. We're, we're, we're walking with someone who knows you from the very beginning. Yes. And he wanted you. And he already knew how you were going to see, where you were going to mess up, how you was going to mess up. And he said, I still love you. Don't let your mess ups and your hang ups keep you away from him. I told you before, when you mess up, go and run to him. Hell is banking on the fact that you back away. And when you back away, it shows there's no real reverence there. Because remember the Israelites, when they showed up on that mountain, what them boys said? Oh, no, sir. We don't want no parts of that. Moses, you go. And they backed away and went back to their tents. And Moses had to go up that mountain by himself. But it shows the difference in reverence, honor. And when you, if you mess up, you get up and you go to him. And you be honest. Lord, I did it. He know it already. But it's the integrity. Are y'all with me on? Y'all catching this? Yeah. Integrity. The honesty about what you did. I did it, Lord. I messed up, Lord. I knew what I was doing. 
And he said, all right, good. I'm glad you can confess it. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for being open for me. All right, let's move. Why? How can he do that with me? Because in his eyes, it's already been paid for. He's already paid for all of your iniquities. Past, present, and future. He just doesn't want you to identify with it. And he just doesn't want you to sit with it and let it torment you. Because he's saying, look, I paid for you to be freed. So stay free. Oh, God. Are y'all, are y'all catching this? Look at this. What did I get you? The 10th verse? Look at this 10th verse. For indeed he died, that's to say, at once, but to live it, he lived unto God. Likewise, reckon yourself, that's us, to be, to be indeed uh, free, dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not, catch it, let not sin therefore rule in your mortal body. That, rain, that word rain means to rule in your mortal body, that you should catch it, obey it in the lust, the lust that is un- unsatisfiable. That's all lust is, it's an unsatisfiable desire. He said that you will not obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield, catch it, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourself unto God and, th- and those that are alive from the dead, alive from the dead, and your members as an instrument, an instrument unto what? Righteousness, righteousness unto God. Are y'all catching this? 16th verse. No, ye not. Now, this right here is a totem pole for me. This is a scripture I stand on for my life. Romans 6 and 16. Look what it says. When people say, well, what scriptures you stand on? This is one of mine. This is one of your pastors right here. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey. Catch what the word says. His servant you are to whom you obey. He said, whoever you yield, that word um, uh, yield also can be presented. Whoever you present yourself to. So yield means to present. I present myself as a servant. And I look, watch what he says. Watch what he says. He said, when you present yourself, whether of sin, guess what you get? Death. When you present yourself or yield yourself over to operate and live a life of sin and it's continuously. It's a continuous. That's what he's talking about. He ain't talking about them little slips when you, if you fall, if, if you messed up, if you slip. He ain't talking about that. He's saying, I'm talking about when you continually are doing something and you know what you're doing is wrong. You know what you, or in other words, let's say it like this. You know what you're doing, he doesn't agree with. Is that a better way of saying it? So you got something going on in your life and you're continually doing it day by day and you know he doesn't agree with it. He said you are a servant to it now. You are connected. You've presented yourself to it and now you are captive to it. And he said now watch what happens. Death is going to form. And I've talked about this before. It doesn't have to be a physical death but it can be a death somewhere in your area. But now, watch this. It can mean a physical death, right? Now, watch this. Or of obedience, catch this, unto what? Righteousness. Obedience. Obedience in the new covenant is simply what? Belief. Believing. That's what obedience is in the new covenant. It's believing. So he said, he said, whether unto of obedience or in other words, believing, believing what? What? he did (laughs) if you believe what he did it is accounted to you Romans 4 for what righteousness accounted imputed it means it's been charged to you that you are righteous you are in right standing with the father now why because I believe what Jesus did and my belief gives me right standing my belief in him gives me access my belief in him makes me a son it's my belief in him right my belief in him helps me to understand that I'm not a sinner my belief in him gives me the access to everything he paid for and he said I freed you to sin from sin so if he's freed me and indeed I am free if the son sets you free indeed you are free so we are free so then he says you have to be dead to it in other words you cannot let it dominate your thinking 
This is why he turned around and said, if you're going to follow me, you must die to yourself. But watch this. Not only die to yourself, but you also have to die to where the places where you've messed up. Because what hell will try to do is use those places to, to magnify your life, to keep you forever identifying with that weak, bondage, captive you. And here you are, and new wine skins, steady producing old wine. And the Bible says over time, it don't match up, and the wine skin will burst. And then you'll find yourself, hallelujah, Jesus, this makes too much sense, making a mess everywhere. (laughs) Because you're saying one thing, but your heart's not in it. So you're saying, I'm a a believer. You're saying he's this. You're saying I'm identifying with him, but then your life doesn't match up with it and old wine and new wine skin don't match up. It bursts. And that's why you have a lot of believers making mess because they have not identified with what he has truly done. They don't really believe it. But they're saying it. They're saying they believe in it but don't really believe it. And he's trying to get you to really believe, really identify with what I did. A change, a change has come over me and he's trying to get that change to be manifested in your life in a greater way. But how did the change come? It's because I believe in him. Catch it. (coughs) Skip down with me to the 18th verse. Same book. Being then made free, catch it, from what? Sin. You have become the servants of what? Righteous. You are, you are a servant of righteousness. Why? Because he freed you from sin. Go with me to the 22nd verse. 22nd verse. <laughs> but now being made, here it is again, freed from sin. Say I'm freed. All right. From sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto, watch this. Look what your fruit is. Holiness. What? I always thought holiness was the root. We, been, we were taught over, over, when I was younger, we were taught holiness was the root. And you got to be holy. And you got to get holy. And you got to live holy. And holiness is right. And they make holiness the root. But look what his word says. Look what our king says in our constitution. That holiness is a fruit. It's a byproduct of the root. So what is the real root of this thing? Love. Love is the real root. Remember, remember we read in Galatians? It says, and the spirit of the fruit. Remember the sister, she showed us. She said, it ain't, it ain't plural. It's singular. The fruit of the spirit is love. The byproducts of this love fruit is meekness, joy. Are y'all catching this? Temperate, all, these other, all these other things produces, but the, the soul root of it is love. The mind of who we're connected to is love. Love and all of these things produce out of it. So my being free from sin is a byproduct of me being rooted in love. That's why I'm not a sinner. I do not identify with sin. I do not even think about sin. I don't think about missing it. Because if you think about missing it, it's always before you. It's always in your conscience. That's what we're about to touch on right now. Catch this, catch this, catch this. Holiness and end, and the end what? everlasting life 23rd verse for the wages of sin is what death Death. but the gift the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord's life the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ eternal life to know him to know him in a greater way in this life that's that's the gift of God to get to know him in this life believe in him in this life watch this to identify with him in this life by way of Jesus Christ. Now, now let's, let's bring it home. Hebrews. Go with me to Hebrews. Because this is the one that, that kept came up, coming up to me. And I said, all right, Lord, we'll touch on it. Hebrews. Skip right there to the ninth verse. Ninth chapter first. I want to show you something in this ninth chapter. And then we're going to go to the tenth chapter and then we'll be done for the day. 
So we're going to do Hebrews 9, Hebrews 10, a few verses here and there, and then we're going to be done. Hebrews 9, skip down with me to the 11th verse. Hebrews 9 and 11. Let me know when you're there. Amen. All right, Hebrews 9 and 11. Let's read. Y'all follow along with me. Watch this. Which? But Christ. Who? Christ. Watch this. Becoming, look what he became. A high priest of what? Okay, stop. Stop. Catch it now. Yeah, hear what he's saying. Our, our Lord and Savior, our eldest brother, our, our, our one, Jesus Christ, he's the high priest now. So we have a high priest. <clears throat> Watch this. He became a high priest of what? Of what? Good things. Good thing. What he wants you focused on? Because he's the high priest of? Notice it didn't say good and bad. Good and evil. Good and wicked. It didn't say that. It said he is the high priest of good things and good things only is what it mentioned. Catch this. Catch this. He has become the high priest of good things to come. Watch this. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Watch this. Now this tabernacle is not made with hands. That is to say, not of, the, not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by, now catch it, his own blood. Uh-oh. He entered in how many times? Once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for who? For us. Eternal. Eternal means what? It never dies. It never goes away. It doesn't fade away. Eternal means eternal, for eternity. So we have been redeemed forever. So those that believe in God keep their, keep their faith and keep their eyes to their heels from which cometh their help. They stay solidified in who he is. Guess this. You are eternally redeemed. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Now this is his word. This ain't, this ain't pastor making this up. Watch this. For us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, catch it, sanctify, sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh. Watch this. How much more shall the blood, the precious blood of what? Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, now catch this. This is the key. This is what he's dealing with. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. That's the one. That's it. What do you want to purge? Your conscience. Your conscience. From what? Dead works. See, see what sin is raining at? In your conscience. Not that subconscious. Not the, not, the, not, the, not the conscience aware mind. Well, most of us, your, most people's past is embedded in them. Subconsciously. And he's saying, I'm trying to purge that. I need that to be purged. But how, how do we allow that to be purged? See, this is where it rolls back around to his word. This is where it rolls back, back around to you meditating. See, when we start about talking about meditating on his word, letting his word be meditated, rehearsing it over and over, repeating it to ourselves over and over so we can get it into our subconscious. And once you start to get it into your subconscious, look what his word does. It starts to purge. Purge you of what happened at 10 years old. Purge you of what happened at 15 years old. It starts to purge and clear away of what happened to you in college and purge you of when that boy or that girl broke your heart and purge. Oh, God, are y'all catching this? It starts to do, and it does it all by itself without you working. All you doing is giving yourself to it. You just submitting to it, and it might not make sense, but I'm just I'm putting it in, and I'm reading it, and I'm just believing it. And the whole time he's washing, he's he's washing and purging you up, and he's shifting some things. He's pulling things out, and he's putting up new walls and 
putting up new gates in, putting up new buildings in, putting up other strongholds because he's tearing down all those other strongholds that have been built off of deceit and off of lies and that we've lived our life according to and he starts tearing those down and putting up new strongholds of truth and putting up new strongholds of your righteousness and putting up new strongholds of your redemption and putting up new strongholds that you are no longer a sinner and I don't want you to identify with that anymore once you're in me. I don't want sin to even be on your conscience. He said, I don't even want you to think about it. Oh my God. Now, watch this. Now, the world is in disagreement with this. Because the world say, you can't live like that. We all sin. I'm just sinning by breathing. Have you ever heard that before? Just breathing, I'm sinning. Well, dear God, just breathing, you're sinning? Like, Jesus, you didn't really bought into that? That's a big lie you didn't bought into. If you're just breathing, you just standing here talking to me and you sinning by breathing? Now, that's bad right there. Now, good God Almighty. We can't even stand out in the front yard without sinning? Jesus, what, what's going on, y'all? You can't live. We all mess up. We all sin. We all fall short of the Lord. We did, but now we are in him. Oh, God. So now I identify with him. I don't identify where I messed up. I identify where he got it right. I don't identify where I missed the mark. I identify where he hit the mark. I don't identify where I fell short. I identify where he made a way out of no way. Are y'all getting this, y'all? This is what he's trying to get you to identify with. And the more you identify with this, the more you understand, I'm not no sinner. I ain't messed up nowhere. I am free from sin. And the more you believe that, watch this, your belief helps you to live it. And you get to a place where you ain't worried about sin because sin ain't even in your consciousness no more. You've been purged. Uh, Oh, God. Let me read it one more time. He said, look, you got eternal redemption, 11, for if the blood of bulls and goats was able to sanctify you, but it wasn't in purified the flesh. How much more then? How much more? How much more is the precious blood of Jesus Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself? Guess what? Without spot. To who? To God. Watch this. Purge your conscience. What do you want to purge you from? From dead works. From dead works. From dead works to serve what? The living God. He said he wants you purged from dead works to serve him, to live and abide by him. Now this is nine. Skip over with me to the 10th chapter. Let me show you this. Last place, we bringing it home now. Look at that, 10th tenth, tenth chapter. We there? Amen. It's just a page flip. Watch this. Read the second verse. <clears throat> 10 and 2. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more, catch it, catch it, no more what? Consciousness of sin. He said, if, they, if what they were doing with the bulls and goats would have purged them, he said, they wouldn't have no more consciousness. Or in other words, it wouldn't be on their mind. They wouldn't be able to be thinking about where they messed up. But see, the reason why they had to go every year, because they knew they messed up. And once they messed up, they knew, oh, Lord, we got to make an offer. We got to get our offer. So let's get the gold in here. Let's keep them spotless because we got to go up there, you know, at the end of the year. And say, and man, we messed up and we got to we got to get. And then they go up, sir, and then they would be free. And then they coming down the mountain, they mess up. Lord Jesus, we got to, we got to. Man, and it's all forever before them, forever before them. When they missed the mark, it was forever before them. And then here come this one man. <laughs> and he's trying, to, he's trying to say, look, I don't even want it on your conscience. I don't want you to think about where you're messing up. Yeah, I know you. I know the alcohol will be calling you and you lean to it, but I don't even want you to think about that. Keep your eyes on me. Keep focusing on me. And I'm going to come get that alcohol. I know the alcohol calling you, but you just keep focusing on me, and I'm going to pull you. And I know them drugs is calling. I know that man I want to call on you, son, but just keep your eyes on me. And if you go over there, just keep your eyes on me. And if you mess up, just keep your eyes on me. And the, the day going to come when you're going to keep your eyes on me, and you're not going. Right. It's going to pull on you, and you're going to say, get up off me. I ain't doing that no more. I ain't going that no more. I ain't operating like that no more. How you do that? I kept my eyes on him. I kept walking with him. 
And if I fail, I just brush myself off. I repent and say, Lord, you see me. Here I come. He said, come on, son. Come on, daughter. Let's keep walking. And I fell and he got me up and I just kept walking. And I fell and he got me up and I just kept walking. And to the point I got to, I didn't fall. It didn't call me. He doesn't even want them to think about it. And he said, if the blood of bull and ghost was doing it, I wouldn't even have to send my son. He said, but those were shadows of what I was going to do. It was just a shadow of what I was leading you to. Watch this. What was that? Two? Hallelujah. Let's look at some more. Go with me. So that's two. Okay, so he said what? No more consciousness of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is, catch it, there is, now, now look what this word is saying. There's a what? A remembrance. And see, that's where hell comes in. Because hell wants you to remember. It wants you to remember how you used to do it. It wants you to remember them nights you went over there late night and how I went down. It wants you to remember how you went and did A, B, C, and one, two, three with do a, me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these are the things they want you to remember. <clears throat> are you with me? Yeah. It's forever one to run it in your mind. What is, oh, you know, you did so and so. And remember how you did that? Oh, remember how that went down? And you remember that noise? And remember that face? And you remember how that? It's forever trying to get you to remember. And he's saying, look, just focus on me and I'm going to purge that. I'm going to purge that. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to prune that. To where that remembrance ain't even gonna come. And then if you even be if you even meet, see the person, you're gonna be like, Lord, I thank you for changing me. A change, a change. Oh Lord, I see the change in me. Because when I used to see that person, I used to feel a certain kind of way. Now I see that person and I smile. Now I see that person, I got a joy. Now I see that person and I ain't moved no more. A change has come over me. And it's all because of you and you alone. Are y'all catching this? He said, Look. Those sacrifices, they were, if, they were, if they were doing what they need to do, you wouldn't even have a remembrance again made of sins. Watch this. Every year. It's the remembrance. He's trying to get you to remember. Now watch this. Have you messed up since you've been saved? Yeah. Don't remember it. Don't remember it. Recognize it. Have an integrity there. I did that, Lord. I messed up. I'm not doing that no more. I thank you, Lord. You delivered me from that. And you focus on that. He told us in ninth chapter, he's the high priest of what? What kind of things? Good things. So he only wants you thinking about the good. He don't want you thinking about, okay, let's go a little further. Let's go. All right. Watch this. Skip down with me to the ninth verse. Ninth verse. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book that it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. The way that they were offering and sacrificing under the law, the Lord really didn't have pleasure in them because they only covered for a season. And he said, I'm trying to do something that's permanent. <laughs> Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. He's talking about himself. That's Jesus now. Watch this. By the which will we are sanctified, sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. How many times? Once and for all. And that was always the plan of God. Because he said, look, they lost it in the garden. He said, but you're going gonna, you gonna to bruise his heel. He's going to bruise your head. He's going to get it back. And he said, I'm going to get in a position to be able to put them back in the garden as though Adam never ate of the fruit. He didn't mess up. And that's why I said earlier in the message, I said, Jesus not only covered for us, but he covers Adam mess up. And he covered Adam. And what Adam did, Jesus paid the price for it. And now, here we are in the garden, and he only, only, only wants you thinking on good things. If you start, isn't it funny how when somebody say, hey, I got to tell you something, we automatically think of what? Something bad happened. Something bad, what happened? Oh, they got to talk to me. Let that smile say, can we talk? You be like, oh, Jesus, what a... (laughs) Lord, what did I do? Then you start to think, did I wash the dishes? Did I get the clothes out of the laundry? She did tell me to get the clothes out of the laundry. Did I get the clothes? Jesus, what's she got to talk? Where I messed up. We just automatically think negative. And that's what God is trying to get. He's trying to get you not to think so negative. Think more positive. Think good. 
He wants you to focus on the good. Watch this. He said, look, he sanctified us how, 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 how many times? Once and for all. Skip down with me to the... <clears throat> okay, hold on. Keep reading. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes, watch this, the same sacrifice, which could never... He said what they was doing, it could never take away sins. It wasn't, it wasn't doing it but covering it for a season. But it could never take away sins, which means when he made this statement that it was God's plans always to take them away but he's saying this under the law he said what they're doing it ain't doing what I really want to do it's just covering it up to the time till I send the lamb slain before the foundations of the earth because when he do it he's going to step in and he's going to deliver us from sin how? once and for all and when he presents his blood as a sacrifice for the whole world it's going to cover everybody and now all the sins of the world are going to be taken care of it's going to be paid for Watch this. But this man, hallelujah, after he offered one sacrifice for what? For sins for how long? Forever. He did what? Sat down on the right hand of God. He sat down. Why did he sit down? Because it was done. It was finished. It was completed. It was no more for him to do when it came to sins. He had defeated sins in his body on the cross. And he in heaven is not worried about sins anymore. And heaven don't want you thinking about sins anymore. It wants you to be, it wants you to know that you are free from it. But you have to first believe it to live it. I am free from sin. I'm not home thinking about not sinning. I'm not home thinking about not getting it right. I'm so focused on him and reverencing him, I'm going to automatically get it right, even because I'm focused on him. And if I slip and fall, guess what? I got somebody sitting on the right-hand side. Y'all catching this? If I mess up, not when, if. See, when always keeps it before your mind. We all sin. You know, you human. You, we all sin. You could, you could just sin just going to the grocery store. You can just sin driving in your car. We all sin. And guess what that does? It forever continuously keeps it in your conscience. When he has said, look, I, I'm trying to purge you from that. I don't want you thinking about the fact that you can sin. Because, yeah, we all can sin. We all can get up right now today and go out there and sin. We ain't got to get in the car. We can just walk down there and just do something that's, that's considered a sin. But he doesn't want to keep it on your conscience. He wants you purged from it. And he wants you to live a life purged from the fact of sin being a part of your life. Because he gave the one sacrifice for us all. For what? Eternal redemption. Are y'all catching this? Let's go a little further. We're done. We're almost done. 22. 22. Let's give me to the second verse. Two more verses and we're done. Watch this. We did the 22nd verse. Amen. Now watch this. Now look what he says. Let us draw near with a true heart, true heart and full what? Assurance of faith. He said, I want you to be assured in your faith. I want you to draw near being solid in your faith. Now what is our faith establishing? The fact that he loves us, right? That's what your faith is in, that he loves us. And he said, I want you to come to me knowing that I love you. I want you to be solid on it, though. I don't want you wavering in the fact that I love you. I need you to be solid in it. Because a man that wavers can't get anything from me because you're fluctuating. You're not solid on it. I need you to know, even if you mess up or even if you miss the mark, that I still love you. And I need you to be solid on it. So when you come to me, I need you to be solid in my, life, in, 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 in my love. Watch this. Full assurance of faith. Having, now watch this. Having our hearts. Now, what's your heart? Your thinking, your subconscious, the inner core, the inner man, the spirit of man is your subconscious thinking. That's where you live from. That's where you operate from. And look what he says right here. I want your heart sprinkled from what? Evil conscience. He said, I don't I want your heart sprinkled from evil conscience. That conscience that's forever saying, you know, we all mess up. We all miss the mark. We all sin. It's just a part of it. Thank God for his forgiveness, but we all sin. He said, no, nah, I, don't, I don't even want you thinking about that. I don't even want you thinking. I don't want, your, I don't want you to think like that. Don't think like that. Cast that. 
I want you, I want your heart sprinkled of an evil, the fact that you can do it. Because we all can. He said, but I don't even want you to think about you can do it. Think about that, my goodness. Think about that I freed you from that. Think about that I've set you free. And the son that has set you free, I'm free indeed. Are you, are you with me? He said, look, I want your heart to be sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast, last verse, fast the profession of our hope, the profession, the confession of our hope with what? Y'all catching this? Our hope without what? Wavering. There it is. That's why he said, come to me in assurance. He said, come to me in assurance. Come to me that you know I love you. Don't you waver in that. Don't you, don't you waver. <clears throat> Let your confession be. If your confession is you're free, then be free. That's your confession? I'm free. Profession. Profession is your career. That's my confession. My confession is that I'm free. I'm free of sin. I'm not thinking about sin. Sin does not rule and reign in my body. Sin does not direct me. I'm not slave to it. He has freed me from the captivity of it, the confinement of it, the slavery of it. He has freed me. And I thank him every day for being free from it. And I go through my life not thinking about if I mess up and how I'm going to do that. No, no, no. I go through my life thanking him for all that he is and all that he has done. And Lord, I know you got something set up for me somewhere. And I'm just going to keep walking with you because right now I've been with you for these last few years and my life has been amazing. I go to sleep in peace and I don't have no stress. I don't be worrying anymore. My body is feeling good. I, oh, y'all catching this right here. I got money in the bank and it's all because of you. And Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I just bless you. Lord, I just honor you. I acknowledge you, Lord. Lord, you know you good. Where would I be without you? God, you keeping me, Lord. God, you're walking with me. Lord, you say you'll never forsake me, and Lord, I thank you. You're always here. I always got somebody to talk to. I'm never alone. Your word is sweet. It is like honey to my tongue. Lord, I just want to give you the glory. You covered all the bases with me. You are amazing and awesome, and you're always before me. You are the king of my life. You're the king of this universe. See that? See, where is sin at in that? Where is sin at in that? Nowhere. Nowhere. So when the thought come oh, and try to tempt you, you might need to do it this way. Uh, 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 Lord, I thank you. Lord, you good. You good. Start singing a song to him. Lord, make up a song. I made up a song the other night. That sounds good. I don't know where that come from. I ain't never heard that song before. Some of the stuff I done made up, I'm like, man, I need to write this stuff down. I'll probably get some money off this stuff. I know that stuff comes straight out of heaven. Some of those songs, I've been, you ever be in the shower, you just come up with stuff, you're humming it, and all of a sudden you start singing it, and then he put the words with it, and you're like, what? I know this is a number one hit. And the whole time, watch this, he's keeping you focused on his goodness. And I'm not even thinking about sin. I'm not even falling short. See, to hear that, to be like, what you mean? You don't even think about, I don't even think about sin. To, to, to a lot of folks, that is, that ain't, that's out of their mind. But that's about right. I'm usually out of a lot of folks' mind. When I talk to some people and I tell, and they be like, how do you think like that? Because his word, his word says it. His, and then I back it up with scripture. Look, the scripture say this. The scripture say that. This, this is what the scripture say. I, this is what it says. So I, I believe what the scripture say. I apply and I, I, with all the might in me, walk it out the way that the scripture says it. And when you become more spiritually minded, trust me, trust me, sin ain't got no place in your life. And you can live a life freed from sin and not try not to sin. Because that's how most believers live their life, trying not to mess up, trying not to make a mistake. No, you can be freed of it to where it'll come and you'll cast that mess down so it won't even rain. It won't even be able to rule. You just live in all his goodness. This makes sense. Look what he said real quick. We done. We done. We done. I just want to read this last little piece one more time. He said, look, let us draw near with a true heart of assurance, having our hearts sprinkled. Sprinkled from what? Evil conscience. 
our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession, the profession of our hope without wavering. What's our hope? That he loves us? What's our other hope? That we are freed from sin without wavering? I ain't wavering in that. For he is faithful that promise. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. And he did it. And he wants you to know he did it. And you live from that place. And don't let nobody talk you out of this. His word is true. If he has done it, if he has freed us, then be freed. And if you struggle with this, then this is what you do. You take this and you, in your long time, you sit with him. And you say, God, you need to make this real. Because I hear that little young boy up there talking. And I hear what he's saying. But I ain't there yet, Lord. Help this to be real to me. Because I want to be there. I want to be freed. I still struggle in some areas. I still have stuff calling my name. But Lord, I want to be free. Free me. And he said, oh, you got it. I'm going to meet you. Let me come see you. Let me come talk to you. And then he come down and he hits you in your thoughts. Or he come down and he give you a night vision. Or he come down and he show you some revelation. Or he hit your heart with something. Or he give you a knowing. He just, he reveals himself to you to let you know that what you're hearing is true. And you can live like this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. I, Pastor Omar Ellison, Lady Ellison, and the Salt and Light family would like to thank you for joining us in today's broadcast. You can visit us at 1350 East Mayhan Drive, which our service times are every Sunday at 12 noon and every Wednesday at 6 p.m. You can also visit us at Facebook and YouTube at Salt and Light Covenant Church or visit us at our website at saltandlightcovenant.com. We thank you again, and until next time, you be blessed.